Hello everyone again. It's nice to see you all here once more. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, Bob Dusharam is here with me today. His presentation will be on the topic of uh, the past, present, and the future of GraphDB documentation and trainings as well. So I'm very excited for, uh, for, for the session. Hi, Bob. And uh, before giving you the floor, I do just want to quickly mention that as per the all of the other sessions before this, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat box in the right panel where we can see them and Bob potentially could answer them at the end of the, the session if there is a time available. So with that, uh, Bob, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Yasin. It's nice to hear that you're excited to hear about this. Um, as Yasin mentioned, my name is Bob Ducharme. I'm a senior tech writer at Ontotext. I joined the company this past spring, but I've been involved in semantic technology and I've been a fan of Ontotext products for many years. And I'm here to talk about the past, present, and future of GraphDB documentation. So starting with the past. Um, New features and concepts would be written up when someone saw a need, there was a, a new feature or something like that. That has worked out well. People pitched in and helped out. Um, the use of the Sphinx documentation platform generated a nice HTML site for the documentation with consistent style sheets and formatting that could be easily managed. When tech writers or engineers had some new feature or support of some new aspect of one of the relevant standards to explain, they wrote it up and they stored it with the existing material, which was searchable. Um, often use a tutorial approach. More tutorials is always a good thing, but using a tutorial instead of taking a user guide or reference guide approach is not always optimal. Um, for certain parts of a product like GraphDB, sometimes a garden path tour is nice but if there's no overview of the whole garden, it's more difficult for a user to look up the answer to their question. Um, step 11 of a tutorial might have answered their question, but the explanation might not make sense unless you've gone through the first 10 steps. And a user with a specific question might not want to create a new repository and load data into it and go through eight more steps just to find out the answer to their question. Um, sometimes there was overlap with existing content, um, not always checked. Someone who wrote up a new feature may have provided some background that they didn't realize was redundant with other parts of the documentation set. They were focused on the new feature and not on reviewing the whole documentation set, which is understandable. And their version of that background might not be completely consistent with the existing version. So all this led to some redundancies, some inconsistencies, and some gaps. So the present, which would be our release 10.4 that came out very recently. Um, of course, for this release, we wrote up a lot of great new features like the availability, availability of GraphDB on AWS, the use of chat GPT to issue natural language queries against your own knowledge graphs, and many features to make system administration easier. But along with covering new features, we did a major reorganization of the existing material to make it easier for users to find the answers that they needed. This included steps like um, study documentation by industry leaders, see what the other companies are doing, how theirs looked, how it was organized, the presentation, um, whether these companies were in the triple store business or not, um, we looked at a lot of them. Make better use of existing information. Um, there, our documentation has had a lot of great explanations that might have been buried in unintuitive places, so we moved some of them. We also renamed some section headings to make it clearer what good those sections would do for the reader. Fix issues with duplicate content. Make sure that each concept has one good explanation in one logical place, and that other places that might have been candidates for storing that explanation have links to the one good explanation. This way, if someone looks in a somewhat logical place that isn't really 
the home of a given explanation, they will find a link to the actual explanation. More documentation about the relevant W3C standards. These standards are what makes it possible for our products and our partners' products to work together to achieve things that neither product on its own might be capable of. The more our customers understand these standards, the more they'll appreciate how to use the combined power of our products. And release 10.4 has expanded explanations of how the publicly available standards documents themselves, that the W3C calls recommendations, can be useful to GraphDB users. I've been surprised many times by people who ask um, on some mailing list or something like that, a, a turtle or a sparkle syntax question. And we can just tell them these things are all spelled out in these publicly mannered standards. That's, that's the beauty of standards, that we can see the documents and find these answers out. And then future-proof our documentation, make it easier to put new documentation in the right place where users will find it. So this shows the home page of the current documentation. If you compare the menu on the left with the corresponding menu on the older versions, which most of which are available, the recent older versions, um, we believe that you will find the answers to your questions much more easily with this arrangement, especially when you drill down into the hierarchies of documentation topics. I mentioned that we renamed some section headings where we thought it would get the um, users more help, to, where it would give the users more help to find the content that they need. For example, the main headings at the top of each of these three sections announces the existence of an available thing, but doesn't tell you much about the thing until you dig down into the section's contents. The new 10.4 version of each of these headings tells you more about what you can do with these parts of the product. Query profiling, notification of updates, and user settings to customize the behavior of the workbench. To be honest, this renaming was a bit ad hoc. Um, for the upcoming release 10.5, we're doing a much more comprehensive review of all the headings to identify every single one that might do a better job of helping users find the explanations that they need to meet their goals if we revise them a little. In addition to the user guide that I've been discussing, there is also documentation built right into the product um, and accessible from the GraphDB workbench, such as the API documentation that you see here. For 10.5, the main user guide will have better documentation about the potential role of the various APIs that GraphDB supports in particular, the RDF4J API, which you can see mentioned at the bottom here, with more examples of how to use it and links to the RDF4J's um, project's own documentation. This API is especially important for building applications around GraphDB and partner tools working together. So that was the past and the present and a little bit of the future. Here's some more about the future. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a key goal for the tech writer team, any tech writer team at all times, is to learn about and then document the next release's new features. It's one of the fun parts, fun parts of our job, finding out about cool new features, playing with them, and then writing up explanations for users about how they can take advantage of these features. I mentioned earlier that we're going to do a more comprehensive job of revising content headings to be more helpful for 10.5. Internal style guide almost complete. This is a joint project between the documentation and marketing teams to make sure that we're more consistent about our use of terminology, spelling, capitalization, linking, and other aspects of product documentation and marketing literature to make it overall more professional and easier to use. Make it clear when partner tools can help with this technology. For example, after GraphDB documentation says what RDF schema is and shows a few turtle triples to demonstrate how to declare and use classes and subclasses, we want to show more about how the user can scale up from this toy sample schema that we show them by using schema and ontology development tools from our partners. 
add our documentation to the Ontotext Knowledge Graph. The Ontotext Knowledge Graph is an exciting internal project at Ontotext. For many years, Ontotext has been great at applying semantic technology to get more out of our customers' collections of prose text documents. Using Ontotext Metadata Studio, the OTKG team is creating a knowledge graph of our marketing related content, such as case studies, blog posts, and more. They've also integrated large language models and the related chat technology. The more the documentation team hears about this work that the OTKG team is doing, the more we say, let's do this for the documentation content too. It will be metadata triples about our documentation about how to do more with metadata triples. It'll be meta metadata. Um, and I'm looking forward to using it to provide new ways for our customers to find the answers that they need in our documentation. Tomorrow, Ivelo Kabakov and Borislav Ankov will tell you more about Metadata Studio. And on Thursday, Krasimiria Bojanova will be telling you more about the OTKG. Um, as a wider set of documentation goals that will be spread over multiple releases, we want to make it even easier for users to learn from the documentation how to achieve the goals that attract many of them to GraphDB in the first place. We want to show more connections between the documentation's current explanations of creating and querying collections of RDF triples with discussions of goals like those shown here and how to use the RDF technology to meet those goals and many of the goals that the speakers have been discussing today. Covering the nuts and bolts of a platform is of course necessary but we also want to talk about how you combine the nuts and bolts in ways that help your business and your customers meet the goals that scalable standards-based knowledge graphs can help you achieve. For example, it's one thing to talk about shackle syntax and it's a related but separate issue to talk about applying shackle to improve the quality of your data. And we want to take the same approach in Ontotext Academy as well and have it reflected in the documentation. With the Ontotext Academy, users will be able to log in at their own convenience and take a series of courses that combine into different learning paths, depending on the user's potential role in a deployed knowledge graph system. Um, the current plans are to provide training for three personas. Are they a semantic technology engineer? involved in data architecture and modeling, or are they an application developer using GraphDB for backend storage, or are they a DevOps person maintaining the clusters and infrastructure that are hosting a system built around GraphDB? As students move through these learning paths, there will be quizzes and interactive exercises to check their understanding, and administrators can track who has taken which learning path modules and how they did on the quizzes. As we'll see, some courses will be in more than one of these paths shown here. For example, all paths will include the introductory course that gives an overview of RDF technology and tools, while one of the while only the second and third learning paths shown here will include the training module about using the APIs. That's not something we would necessarily show to semantic ontology engineers. Although if anyone wants to take more than one learning path, they're welcome to. We may also offer more specialized courses in the future about reasoning, consistency checking, virtualization, and other topics. For now, we're using a learning management system called NorthPass. Learning management systems are a whole category of software that got much bigger during the pandemic when the need for individual remote training grew in so many places. These let you create and upload modules that may be formatted text or video or other formats and then mix and match these modules for different courses. Learning management systems also let you build quizzes with questions like the one shown here. I'm going to give the Shackle fans among you, I heard Shackle's been mentioned a few times today. I'm gonna to give the Shackle fans a minute to decide whether the correct boxes have been checked here. Whether I pass the quiz question that I created myself. 
So it says shackle constraints let you check the following in your data. One, whether a property value is a certain data type. Two, whether a phone number value matches a specified regular expression string. Three, whether your class names are spelled correctly. Four, that one employee's given name and nickname are not the same value. So they've all been checked except for the second one. Is that correct? Let's see what the learning management system says. It shows the correct answers and the ones I picked, and I incorrectly checked the third checkbox and missed the second one. Shackle can match values against regular expressions, but it cannot do spell checking. And we see in the lower right here, there's an option to retake the quiz that can be configured. Um, I guess three was the default to let people do it three times, but we could have it be more or fewer. We, we don't even have to allow retakes, uncheck that box. It can be unlimited. Um, the previous slide showed the correct answers. It doesn't have to, we could hide the correct answers, give a time limit. And a lot of these questions, quiz questions, like here's another quiz question. Um, this is a true false question. So we can also have some that have free form text answers, um, true false questions, and they can be configured in similar ways like we saw on the last screen. Um, this shows a radio button question that only allows one answer. We would start the overview course with a self-assessment quiz to gather data about the backgrounds of those taking the courses. So to review the three currently planned learning paths, and there may be more, we may split some of these or add or combine, um, semantic oncology engineer, application developer, and DevOps engineer. So of the learning paths, let's look a little more at the bullets themselves. I mean, the, the, the paths themselves. For a semantic ontology engineer, it's the basic standards and how they fit together. The linked open data section will provide a review of popular data sets out there and how you can take advantage of them. And then the shackle part could help clean them up, which is another, uh, another topic we've heard about today, cleaning up publicly available data. For an application developer, this includes two courses that we saw on the last slide, but with more courses for the application developer. Remote repository management, how without having the workbench, but to automate the ability to create a repository, put data into it, query it, change it, delete repositories. Um, remote APIs, the GraphDB, RDF4J, Spark. GraphDB supports several different um, APIs. So we want to teach the roles that each one can play, the strengths and weaknesses of each, which one is good for what. Um, the GraphDB plugin API, which lets you write your own extensions to GraphDB using Java how to define and execute transactions. The DevOps path would have more content about deploying and maintaining a scalable system, you know, configuring, cluster management, the bigger questions, um, deploying on clouds. And notice how all three learning paths that we've looked at have the same first bullet, the same first course. This overview course will enable everyone who takes any of the path to all be able to speak to each other with the same vocabulary and understand each other's roles. On the next two slides, I'm going to use this overview as an example to provide an example of two approaches that we can take um, with this material in the Ontotext Academy or in the documentation. Here's an early draft of the outline of the first Ontotext Academy course. Um, most people who are familiar with these standards will say this looks like a sensible list. It's a good overview of the important topics. These are the important basic things to build from. But here, they're all listed as cryptic acronyms. This is the kind of thing that can scare beginners off. Um, let's look at another version of the outline that covers the exact same material. This version frames everything in terms of the goals you would meet by working with the technologies that each section covers, the same technologies that we saw listed on the previous slide. The first bullet here covers RDF, the second RDFS and OWL, the third Shackle, and so forth from the previous slide. But instead of describing the content that the course will cover in terms of the cryptic acronyms used for the W3C standard names, this covers the goals. And we achieve these goals by taking advantage of GraphDB support for those standards, which is what the course will cover. 
In other words, the course will ultimately cover the topics listed on the previous slide, but with clearer context about how learning about these standards helps you meet these goals shown here. So I'm repeating my title slide here to reemphasize the subtitle, aligning documentation and training content with user goals, small scale goals and large scale goals, hopefully. We want to align this product documentation and Alta Text Academy with the goals. We want the users to get the most they can out of this technology, especially when taking advantage of the W3C standards to use Alta Text tools in combination with partner tools to build more powerful, useful applications. Um, I mentioned that one of the fun parts of being a tech writer is learning about the new features in each release and then playing with them and showing our customers how they can take advantage of those features. In the forum today, I've already learned some cool new things that we can do with this technology, and I'm looking forward to hearing my coworkers and especially our partners in the next two days tell us about the new possibilities of how we can combine these tools from our growing collective toolbox to help customers meet new kinds of goals. Um, so I get excited about this stuff and then talk too fast. So uh, I guess we have plenty of time for questions. Um, so I'm gonna take a look at the list. Okay, we already have a couple. Um, what are the chances that Google bots will pick up this new content as relevant and start displaying graph DB documentation pages in top position as answers in response to formal semantics questions? Well, to be top position, there would be, you know, that's an SEO involved there. A lot of things have to link to it, I assume. Um, Google bot, Google bots picking it up. This is something we, ha we have discussed because even with the current documentation, if you search Google, which is all available online, if you search, Google, um, Google for a certain feature within GraphDB, it might show the top hit being the documentation for the 10.1 release of our software. We'd rather it was the 10.41. I think it's because um, if, it if that particular feature hasn't changed much from 10.1 to 10.4, um, then that's the one they show. But this is something we have discussed and that we're really curious about how we can um, work with some more. Um, I see a question already been answered. Onto Text Academy is open for, oh, is it open for everyone or is it restricted to customers or partners only? Um, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, that's certainly where we're starting, internal and with partners, and then maybe growing from there. But I'm not sure the ex exact plans to make it completely publicly available. We have discussed it. Um, where can we find the link to open the Onto Text Academy portal? It's It's not. We're, it's under progress right now. If I wasn't giving this presentation, I would be working on it right now. Um, but we're planning to have the first two main modules um, ready for internal review sometime next month. Um, from Yvonne, um, I think he might be answering something. Knowledge graphs is one of the solid approaches for learning management systems, and there are many successful stories in that direction. Any management system for product documentation, such as tutorials and user guides, can benefit enormously from being based on a knowledge graph underneath. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, I think, would you say that knowledge graphs are the way forward for documenting tutorials and user guides? Um, I remember when people used to say like, oh, RDF is gonna replace XML. You know, when XML, people don't realize XML was invented for publishing content. Um, and having paragraphs in a specific sequence, RDF, that's not what RDF is good for. So to get back to the question, um, knowledge graphs would be a way to, like I said, I was excited about joining uh, our content being in the OTKG. Knowledge graphs will provide a way to navigate content so where you have so there'll be a lot more ways to find what you need and find related things um, when you have metadata about navigation driven by a knowledge graph I, that's why i'm so excited to play with it with content we wrote ourselves to see how we can get more out of it by taking advantage of the documentation that we're writing about so i think that's all the questions i have a minute in case anyone wants to repeat one that i missed or yeah, Bob, I think you covered every question so far. Uh, and if anyone else has 
additional question after the session is over, you can always reach out to Bob directly and I'm sure he will uh, answer it privately. So I can see that we have still five minutes. So maybe people can take a bit of a break before the next and final session, which is the panel. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. So I suggest everyone to, to, to hop in there and watch it. Uh, it will start in about five minutes. So thank you, Bob. It was very interesting. Thank you, Yasem. Bye-bye, everyone. See you later.